Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be turning our backend closure application into a full stack app. So let's get started. I'm cool, yeah. cool, so first off, I'm gonna be working off an API I made in the previous video, and that's available in this GitHub repo. If you wanna see how I made this, you can watch the previous tutorial, but we're gonna be setting it up in this video. So I'm just gonna copy the link here and git clone this. I'm gonna clone it into short URL app. And essentially what this uh, repo does is it's, it's an API where we can post a URL to it. We get back a short code and natural code will allow us to redirect to the longer URL. So let's cd into short URL app and open it in VS code. So once we have that open, um, we got some DB credentials in our env.edn and I'm just gonna create some new credentials to make sure it works. So I used uh, planet scale to make my database and I have this table inside of it. The syntax to create this table will be in the description along with all the links and everything in the video. So I'm just gonna go back here and connect to this database, generate a new password. Cool, copy these credentials, go back to our project and use this for our env. That should be all we need to do to run this project. So I'm just going to start a project REPL, connect to devs.edn because it's a devs.edn project. And let's go to db.clj and load and evaluate this current file. And then we should be able to query, so call get URL with our slug and it should return a URL. If you don't have this URL, you can insert it with this form here. But now if we go to core.clj and load and evaluate this file and then run the server here, we should be able to, so it's running on port 3001. We should be able to go to localhost port 3001 forward slash ABC and it should redirect us and it doesn't, the server's not found because it's not 30,001. 3001, and it's not localhost, it's localhost. Cool, it took a while to get there, but we got there. So now we have our project running. Let's add a front end for this. So the libraries that I'm gonna be using are shadowclj.js, and shadowclj.js will allow us to compile our, jo our closure script into JavaScript. Helix, Helix is a library which allows us to write basically React in closure script. If you're familiar with React, then Helix will look familiar to you. And then we're gonna be using Tailwind CSS to style the application. So I'm just gonna close this GitHub repo here because we don't need it anymore. We don't need plan scale anymore. We can get started by setting up shadow CLJS. Let's do that. So what I'm gonna do, well, the first thing I wanna do is just separate our closure from our closure script. I'm also actually, well, I serve, I'm gonna stop this REPL. So I'm gonna stop the server and then I'm gonna kill this REPL. And then what I want to do is create a new folder in source called CLJ. And this is going to house all our closure. Move that there. Then inside CLJ, well, inside source, I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it CLJS. And inside of that, I'm going to make a new folder called app. And inside of that, I'm going to make a new file called core.clj.s. And then I'm going to change the namespace to app.core. Save this. And I want to make an entry point, well, uh, an entry function to our application. So I want to define a function here called init, and all this is going to do is console log, console dot log, how's it? And we are going to export this by creating some metadata, and cool. That's the same as like doing like a modules dot export. If you're confused about the syntax, I've got a video for that which I'll link up. This is just how we run console.log. JS has all the window functions attached to it. So let's start by creating a shadow CLJS Eden file, which will hold our config for shadow CLJS. New file, shadow CLJS.eden. And this takes a map and obviously some keys and values. So the first key I wanna add is builds, and this will define the builds for shadow CLJS. And I'm gonna name the first build app. And 
app takes. This takes in a map. And the first thing I'm gonna add is the target. And the target is gonna be browser because this JavaScript is gonna run in the browser. Then we need an output directory. And this is gonna be where our JavaScript gets compiled to. And that's gonna be inside resources, forward slash public, forward slash assets, forward slash JS. And you'll see why just now. Then I'm gonna uh, define that entry point for our application. So I wanna say start at this point here. So to do that, all we do is we add a modules key. Then we need another key here. I'm gonna call it main. This will be the name of the file that our closure script gets compiled to. So we'll have a main.js sitting inside of resources public assets JS after this is done. And then we just need to tell it to have the initial function of app.core, well, in it inside the app.core namespace. And that is that, let's save that. Now let's define a development server. So when we, when we start Shadow CLJS, we want a front-end server to start on, let's say port 5003. So dev HTTP, so our development server, and we want it to start on port 5003. And then we want it to serve this folder, this resources public folder. Cool. But now we want Shadow CLJS to actually start the REPL for our closure and our closure script, which means we want it to use um, the dependencies in our depths.edn file. So there is configuration for that. And I'm going to go to the shadow CLJS documentation to see how to do that. So go back to shadow CLJS, the user's guide, and then to search for depths. Yep. So build tool integration, depths.edn. Um, example was shadow CLJS.edn with a CLJS alias. So this is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to copy this out, paste it here. So this is saying use our depths.edn file and uh, use the CLJS alias in that file. So we're going to create that alias and it's going to have the shadow CLJS dependency. So let's go to depths.edn and add that alias. And Make sure our curly braces are right. And I just noticed that this should be pause. Now we need to put the Maven version in here. So let's go back and see what the current version number is. And it is 2.19.9. So 2.19.9. Save that. And I think we have enough to now start um, our REPL using Shadow CLJS. So technically everything should work. So if we go start a project REPL, and instead of selecting devs.edn, we select shadow CLJS, we select the app build. Cool, we get this warning, but we'll solve that just now. Looks like everything is working, just takes a bit of time. Cool, the required namespace app.core is not available. So let's sort that out. And I think to sort that out, we can add source CLJ here and source CLJS. And that will add the two paws. And now if we start a project REPL, connect to shadow CLJS. Cool, okay, it's compiling. We select the app build. Then our HTTP server is available at localhost 5003. So let's go here. We're missing our index.html file, but I think we should still see our message. No, we won't see our message because we're not loading any JavaScript. So let's go back here. I want to just show you that inside resources, we'll have public assets JS and inside JS, we have a main.js. And that's going to be our compiled JavaScript. So let's create our index.html file inside of public. So inside of here, we'll say index.html. And here we'll say HTML5. Then this will be our short close this short URL app and let's include that JavaScript. So script and the source will be, let's be assets forward slash JS forward slash main.js and let's defer loading this file, save this. And now if we refresh this, we should see how's it console.logged. Awesome, we've just set up shadow CLJS. And if I'm not mistaken, we can go back to, let's go back to db.clj to show that we can, we can evaluate some 
closure. Let's just evaluate this whole file. Load and evade current file. Now we should be able to get URL ABC. Cool. And if we go to core.cl.js, we should be able to just execute JavaScript. So JS alert, hello, execute this. And here we have an alert of hello. And you can see at the bottom, if you're using VS Code and Culver, you can see this is a CLJS REPL. And if we switch to a CLJ file, it changes over to the CLJ REPL. Cool. Cool. So now let's just look at fixing this warning here. Shadow Cell CLJS is not installed in the project. And that's because we need to include it as a dependency inside of package.json. So I'm going to stop this REPL, open up a terminal. Then I'm going to initialize an npm project, so npm init dash y to say yes to everything. Then I'm going to install shadow CLJS, so npm i d for uh, dev dependency shadow CLJS. And this will include shadow CLJS into our project so that the next time we start that REPL, we won't see that warning. And we can just test that out. Um, start a project REPL, shadow CLJS, connect to app. And yeah, no more warnings. Cool. Cool, no more warnings. So the next thing I want to do is include Helix into this project. So to do that, let's go to the Helix GitHub repo and let's just copy all of this code in the start of the repo. Go to our project and add that here. Save this. Then um, instead of this console.log in our init function, we'll use this rdom render function here. And I can see that we need an element with the ID of app in our index.html. So let's add that also. Inside of body, I'm just going to create a div and the div will have an ID of app. Cool. But now we also need to install. If we go here, we need to uh, require Helix as a dependency. So I'm just going to click here and copy this. Then let's go back to our deps.edn. What is this here? And let's add the dependency here. Cool. So now we have Helix in our devs.edn file, but I think we also need React. I think it says so here. You need React and React DOM. React and React Refresh should be installed automatically. Install the current funding version of your renderer example, React DOM. So let's install React DOM. So to do that, we open up our terminal again and go npm i React DOM. Cool. So now if we go back to quarter CLJS. I think this will work. Let's start a project REPL, shadow CLJS, connect to app, uh, connect our app build, go to localhost 5003. Cool. And it's working. And if we type in here, that works nice. Now I know if we, let's just make this bigger. I know if we go inspect and check out console, we're going to get this warning. React DOM the render is no longer supported in React 18. We need to use create root. So let's see how to do that. I'm just going to copy this. And here's the solution. So we need to import the create root function from React DOM client. So let's do that. Let's make this so we can see stuff. So instead of using from React DOM, let's get from React DOM client. Then to that function, we need to pass through our element. So let's do that. So here, what I'm going to do is create a let binding in our init. And I'm going to define a root variable. And with R DOM create, let's just evaluate this. I don't know how this came here. Evaluate this, save. We'll have a create root function. Then we need to pass through our element. 
Then I think we call render on root. Let's just see. Yeah, root has a render function and that takes in our app. So here's our app. And here we're gonna call dot render on root. And just move this into here, into our let binding, get rid of this, save. And I think that should be it. Let's go back to our application. Okay, and it's not working because create root is not a function. Let's go back and add an E here. Spell it properly. Refresh. Awesome, now we don't get any console errors. Cool, so now Helix is working and we're getting no console errors. Let's look at making the front end for our application. So essentially I want the front end to be like an input box with a button, you click the button and then you get back the URL that you're supposed to be redirected to. So we can get rid of this greeting component. Um, state, set state, use state. So the initial state of this is this map and it doesn't make sense to have name, let's have URL and we can default that to an empty string. Welcome, we don't need that. We don't have our greeting component anymore. The input on change, um, when we change the value of this input, it should change the URL value and the value should be the URL from our state. So save this, refresh. Cool, this should be updating the state. Now I want a button. So let's add a button here, D button. And the button should say um, short, shortened URL. Save this, make sure we have a button. Cool, so this is basically what our UI is gonna look like. So before we add the functionality, what I wanna do is make our backend actually serve the index.html file and the JavaScript along with it. So let's set that up. So I'm gonna go back to our project and just close all of this. Then I'm gonna to go to our core.clj file. And essentially what I wanna do is right now, if we start the server, so I'm gonna start the server, well, load and evaluate the current file, start the server. And if we go to port, it's gonna open a new tab here, go to localhost 3001. If we go to um, a blank path, we get create redirect screen and that's this response here. So instead of returning that, I wanna return our index file. So let's create a function at the top here called defend index. And we essentially just wanna read our index file from a server and serve it. So to do that, I wanna use um, from closure.java.io. I wanna use this namespace. So I'm just gonna import this as io. And here, io, we can read from our resources directory, think resources or resource, and we wanna read our index.html file. So that's at public forward slash index.html. And we wanna slurp that, and that will just read that file. So if we evaluate this function and run index here, and I think this isn't happy because we need to add um, our resources directory to our pause in our devs.edn file. So go devs.edn, let's add resources here. Save this, oops, let's restart our REPL. Close this, close our output, close our depths. Then let's connect to our app build and then we can load and evaluate the current file. And if we execute index, cool, we get our index returned. That's awesome. So now instead of returning this string, we can return the contents of index. Save, go back to Firefox, run this. Okay, we need to start our server again. So let's start server. Crazy direct screen. Why? Let's reevaluate app. Hmm. Let's stop the server and start the server. Inspect. What's going on? Response. Okay, cool. So there's we're not getting. Okay. <laughs> So we're not getting our, our main.js serve because right now we're just serving the HTML file. So if we go to our index.html file 
and we add some like, random stuff here, save this and refresh this, we'll get that. But our app isn't loading because our main.js isn't found. So let's serve that. What we can do is we can create a resources handler, which Ring provides us with. So we can just go assets. This is the path that we want to serve. <clears throat> Anything on this assets path will be handled by Ring forward slash create resource handler. And this takes in options and the options are going to be the root path. And the root path is going to be public forward slash assets. So everything in public forward slash assets will be available at forward slash assets. So I think we can evaluate this, go here again, refresh, and we should see our app. Now this is a problem because we don't have a fave icon. I'm not going to add a, like, that's a, yeah, I'm not going to add a fave icon. Sorry. But now what we can do is we can now post to the API and get the short code back. So let's do that. Just going to go open our project again, close this, close this go to our core.cl.js and let's um, handle the onclick event for this button. So onclick, we want to run a function and for this onclick event handler, we're going to have a function called, let's say just fetch slug and let's make that function at the top here, fetch slug. That's going to be a function which is going to post the URL from state to our API. So before we continue with this, there's a library that I want to use called Promisa or Promisa. So let's go here, Promisa, Promisa Closure. And this will basically allow us to handle promises really nicely. So I'm just going to click here to include this in our devs.edn file. So copy this here, go to devs.edn, paste that here. Then let's restart our Ripple. Go back to core.cl.js and let's just look at how to use this. So I'm just going to copy this fetch response. So copy this whole plet, save. We just also need to include promiser. So let's just go to require and copy this here. Go here and copy that there and then evaluate this. Now reevaluate our app. Now it should be able to go to our application, check our network, click shorten URL. Let's refresh this. Okay, cool. We have to start our server again because <laughs> we restarted our Ripple. So go to core.clj, load this file, then start our server. Go back here, refresh, click shorten URL, and we see we're getting a UUID back. Okay, so what's happening here is we're running a fetch on this endpoint and we're awaiting the result. The result is going to response. Then we're calling .json on the response and we're seeing, well, we're not actually seeing the response because we're not doing anything with it. But I think we can do something like this. Let's go print line, save this. And now if we run this, we should see a console log. Yeah, okay, now we still have a promise. So what we can do is we can name this underscore response. And then if we grab the response from here, we can name this response. And now if we print line response, so we're gonna await the result of this, then await the result of this, then we're gonna print the result. Oh. That's because we need to call <clears throat> get.json on this response. So just to make clear what's happening here. So we basically are waiting fetch here of this. And that's going to be, if you're writing this as JavaScript, this is what this would look like. Response. And then we're going to get response is equal to the await of underscore response dot JSON. And then this would be our result from the API. Reevaluate this, click shorten URL. Cool, and there we get our result. Rad. But now instead of fetching HTTP bin, we want to fetch our server. So the, the root is actually forward slash API forward slash redirect. If we go to core.clj, that's the root here. 
and we need to post it, if we check this function out, um, a URL in the body param. So let's add a trading slash. We need to pass through some options here. So the method is gonna be post. Then we're gonna to need to add the body param. So we can go body, and then we need to call um, json.stringify on a map, which will have a URL, and we're gonna fetch that URL from our state. So we can get our URL from our state. We also are gonna to need to add some headers here. So I'm gonna add headers, because we're posting content.json, we need to have those headers. And the headers for this post are gonna be our content type, and that's gonna be JSON. So application forward slash JSON. I think this should work. Let's save this and evaluate it. Go to our browser, re like refresh this, click. Well, let's add a URL here. I'm gonna just add the Stack Overflow article, shorten URL. Okay, so now we're getting a few issues. I don't even know if we posted anything. Okay, we're calling get. So right now this isn't working and the issue is that we're using closures, well, closure maps and we need to actually be using JavaScript objects for our options. So let's go back here and we can wrap this whole map in a function called clj to js. And then we also need to make this map JavaScript so we can go hashtag js. And I think that'll solve our problem. Let's try this again. Let's just refresh this page, shorten URL. Now it's posting and now we're waiting a long time. And cool, we get a response back, which is not great because we're getting like a whole string back Maybe we want to return an object. And if we check console, JSON will pass unexpected character. Okay, so we're not actually returning JSON, we're just returning a string. So this is a problem on the API side. And that's what this error is about. We can't pass JSON because we're just returning a string. So let's go to core.clj. And for the response here, for creating a redirect, instead of returning a string, let's Return a map and let's say slug is the slug that we generated. And I think we need to reevaluate our app. Let's just start and stop the server again. Well, stop and start the server. Go here, copy our URL again, put it in here, click shorten URL, see the response. Cool, okay, now we're getting JSON back and we have a key of slug and a value of nzkr. Go to console and we see we're getting our JavaScript object back with slug and nzkr. So we need this to be closure now. So let's go back to core.cljs and let's convert this response to closure. So what we can do here is do the opposite of clj to js. We want to do, um, let's call this data and we'll say we want js to clj and that's going to need our response. And we can also say keywordize keys to true, and that will keywordize our tr keys. So now if we print line data, JS to JS to CLJ, sorry. And then this needs to be this response, that's fine. Okay, let's refresh, shorten URL. Cool, and we get our closure script object back. So now what we can do instead of printing that out, we can call set state and we can associate slug on our state with the value of slug from data. And let's set the initial slug to be a blank string. Slug is a blank string. And here what we can do is we can say, let's say if, if there's a slug in our state, then let's just for now have a div. Well, let's just, yeah, let's just render out. Let's just show the slug. Otherwise, let's render out a div with this, the button and the input. So if we refresh this, we get nothing back. So let's 
default is not an empty string, but to null. Cool. And now let's copy this URL. Now we should just see that's our slug that we get returned. So now we can easily convert this into a URL that we want to show the user. So let's go back here and it's, let's just show the whole URL. So we can go string. So now what we want to show is I want to show the full path. So localhost um, port 3001 forward slash whatever the slug is. So to do that, well, to get the, the host on window, we can go window.location.href and that will return us the, the now return us the host. I actually think window.location.host is what we're looking for. Well, that doesn't return us the HTTP. So window.location. Let's see what all these things are. Origin. Window.location.origin. Let's use that. Let's go back to our project. And we want to get from JS location.window. We want to get the property. So using dot, we'll call a function. Using dot hyphen will get us the property. And the property is origin. Slug. And let's actually wrap this in a a tag, so div a. And let's give that an href attribute of basically the same thing. Um, so instead of repeating this, what we can do is we can create another variable here and we can call it redirect link. And, and we can then use this link on both these places. Let's save this, refresh, location.window is undefined. I think it's just JS location. Save this. Refresh. And let's try this again. Let's add whatever URL. Div is not defined. And that's D, not div. Refresh. Just copy. We can copy anything in here. It doesn't matter. Cool. And I just want to add a trailing slash here because it's important. Cool, so that's basically what I want from Helix. This is looking good, but it can look better. And that's why we need Tailwind CSS. So let's do that. Let's add it. So to add it, we're going to go, let's go to our browser, not this one, this one. And let's see, how do we install Tailwind? So we can install Tailwind CSS as a dev dependency. So I'm just going to copy this here. And let's run this in our terminal. Here our terminal, execute this, go back to Tailwind, then we can run mpx Tailwind CSS in it, and that's just going to create this config file for us. So let's run this, and now we should have a Tailwind config file, like so. Then let's go back and see what we need to do there. Now we need to add where our content is, so I'm going to just copy this content out and paste it here. So this is interesting. This is basically checking all HTML and JavaScript files, but we actually are using CLJS files. So that's where it needs to look for the classes as it runs. And let's go back here and we need an input.css. So what I'm going to do is let's just create a new file here. I'm just going to call it global dot CSS and then we can just add these tailwind components go back here then we need to run this command so this will scan the files and then output to a, to a CSS file so let's go here and let's run this so paste it but we need to change the source the input is not input, let's just change this to uh, global.css and the output will be in resources um, forward slash CSS forward slash output.css and if we run this, now I think every time we add CSS, it'll be added to this output.css. 
Let's actually add this to our index.html file. So let's close this. And at the top here, let's add a style sheet. So we need a link. Uh, relationship is style sheet. And then the href would be assets forward slash CSS forward slash output dot CSS. And we can so if I'm correct, Tailwind should have like no base styling. So let's go back to our app and refresh this. It should look worse and it doesn't look any different. Oh, and that's because I'm compiling to the wrong directory. So I'm just going to go to our terminal, close this, delete this CSS folder. It needs to go into resources, public forward slash CSS. Now, if we go back to our app and refresh, uh, <laughs> we're going to get there. It's public assets, CSS output.css. And now we can just delete this old CSS file. Now in assets, we should have two folders. Yeah, cool. It's working finally. So now we can close all of this and we can start adding some CSS styling. Now this is not going to be a styling course by any means. It's just going to be, let's make this look probably worse than it looked originally. <laughs> Whatever. So, so let's start off by adding some styling to our button. Let's add class names here, class names, and we can, let's convert this text to uppercase and it's not. And I think because we need a hyphen here, Save this. And this needs to be class name. Cool. So our styling is working. Let's add a border size two and let's make this rounded. And let's add some padding Y two and padding X four. Right, now let's style the input. So I think let's go here, let's class name and let's make this form control. Form control and let's give it a border and say the border is solid and border gray, let's say 600. Let's go back and let's create a placeholder and it's gonna be Enter URL. Let's get this padding Y. Let's get rid of this. And you know what? Let's just center this whole thing. So on this main div, let's add class name. I think we can say grid and place item center. Save this. Go back. And I think we need to set the height, the whole screen. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Let's make the background pink. So BG pink, let's say 50. That's beautiful. Maybe even a hundred. This is a pretty nice looking UI. Let's copy this URL, paste it in here, click shorten URL. And now we have our shortened URL. We can click on it and we get redirected. Amazing. Cool. Cool. So that's basically um, the basics of a full stack project. In my next video, I want to go about deploying this because it's a sin that I'm the only one who can use this project locally. And I just want everyone out there shortening the URL. So cool. So catch you in the next one, guys. Bye.